GDP and employment and potential for driving economic trans transformation. Primary focus areas of DBG will be agribusiness with a focus on off-farm value chain activities, manufacturing, ICT software and allied services, including business process outsourcing and tourism, boosting home ownership through affordable and longer tenure mortgage finance, infrastructure financing, uh, which is key, and essentially we are going to leverage our public um, resources um, for private sector uh, financing. DBG is not similar to the existing commercial banks that we have in the country. It is a non-deposit taking wholesale bank. DBG will neither give retail nor direct business loans at the former Bank for Housing and Construction, NIB, ADB, and the like. It will rather provide funds to the existing commercial banks and non-bank financial institutions um, which qualify um, to provide long-term lending and other innovative products that are presently lacking in the system. The bank will therefore complement and strengthen the operations of existing financial institutions. It is important to state that since independence, this is the first time we're establishing a bank of this nature. It is a model along the lines of the German Development Bank, KFW, which played a pivotal role in the post-World War II reconstruction and transformation of the German economy. And I believe that the destruction that the COVID has done to Ghana and other African countries, um, this is the type of intervention that is required. Through DBG, government will be able to further strengthen its support to the private sector to spearhead economic growth and transformation. DBG is an instrument to ensure long-term finance to the private sector on a sustainable basis and also build our infrastructure. Government therefore expects DBG to be a financially sustainable institution that is able to raise long-term funds from the domestic and international capital markets and from international financial institutions without burdening the country's balance sheet. To this end, government is taking pains to ensure that DGB has a strong governance structure of professional and independent board and management. A process to select the board and management on a competitive basis is currently underway. Work on DBG started in 2018 with a task force of industry experts established by government to recommend the best approach to establish a modern and dynamic development bank. Based on the recommendation of the task force, government decided to set up DBG as a new non-deposit taking wholesale bank under the Companies Act. DBG as a wholesale and non-deposit taking bank requires no branch network and minimal staff. It will therefore be very costly financially and in terms of the closure of branches and employment laws to try to convert an ADB or NIB into a viable modern development bank. The advantage we foresee of a greenfield approach is that one gets to start from a clean slate with no legacy financial governance and other issues. This allows us to focus on the future and move straight into setting up DBG equipped with modern and sound design principles. The Greenfield approach also has the potential to attract more private and international institutional capital as we have witnessed with EIB's 170 million euro facility. It also governments plans to attract other shareholders, both domestic and international, so as to increase DBG's capital base and also reduce the government share over time. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, despite the unsuccessful experience in Ghana and many African countries, development banks have been instrumental in driving economic transformation elsewhere. Many industrialized countries have development banks or similar institutions to provide investment finance to their SMEs or to encourage investment in new and promising but risky economic activities. Examples of transformational development banks include Japan Development Bank, Korean Development Bank, Development Bank Singapore, Brazilian Development Bank, KFW from Germany, and Development Bank of Nigeria. As I indicated in my last press briefing on 9th May 2021, the bank will be launched in July 2021. 
We are aiming to establish DBGU for initial government of Ghana equity contribution of $250 million, of which $200 million has already been paid. We aim to increase DBG's lending capacity by raising additional funds from domestic and international private and institutional investors. The World Bank is providing $250 million. KFW is providing $46.5 million. We are also talking to the AFDB um, to partner with us in the establishment of the bank. DBG will pay back the loans that government has taken on its behalf from the international financial institutions. Government therefore sees its contribution to DGB as investment that should be paid back. All the more reason will insist on the professional management of the bank. As I indicated in my last press briefing on 9th May 2021, the bank will be launched in July 2021. One of the core pillars of the 100 billion Ghana Cares Obatampa program aims to achieve the following. Economic transformation that requires that entrepreneurs in key productive sectors have access to long-term finance at affordable interest rates. Analysis done as part of the background technical work for establishing DBG found that in Ghana, agriculture and manufacturing receive around 4 and 8 percent respectively in bank lending, and only about 15 percent of bank loans exceed five years in tenor. The launch of DBG this year will address fundamental financing constraints. It will provide loans to tenors of up to 15 years with a focus on key transformational sectors, agribusiness, manufacturing, ITC, tourism, and housing. In the area of housing, we intend to look at even a longer period uh, of financing to ensure that people with low salaries will be eligible for mortgages. DBG will be a wholesale bank lending to retail banks and non-bank financial institutions to loan lend to SMEs, interest rates will be based on the need to support enterprises while at the same time ensuring financial sustainability of DBG. DBG will also operate a partial guarantee window and also a digital platform um, to facilitate um, factoring um, by retail banks um, for their SMEs. Government learning from our national experience and also from global experiences regarding development banks is determined to set up DGB so that it stands the test of time and supports Ghana's economic transformation on a long-term basis. To this end, government is taking extraordinary measures to ensure that DGB is well capitalized and it has a strong and independent governance structure, including competitive international recruitment of its board and senior management to enable it to be run professionally and on a financially sustainable basis without recurrent recourse to the public purse. As I mentioned earlier, uh, with government as an enabler, uh, DBG should be able to go to the private market to raise a lot more money than we can do locally. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, DBG builds on the platform of government's strong economic management over the past four years including macroeconomic stability, reformed and strengthened financial sector, stronger national support for private business and continued improvements to the policy and regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, our efforts to transform the economy, build decent homes, produce more of what we consume, create decent jobs of decent pay, particularly for young Ghanaians, will be in vain if we do not build a strong financial sector that has the confidence and courage to support our businessmen and women. As you know, DBG will also ensure that we have the infrastructure that is required to open up the country. And the setup of DGB is to do just that. DGB will help access medium to long-term capital at affordable rates, and I am excited by DBG and what it can do for our private sector to lead in our economic transformation and job creation under the Ghana Cares Obatampa program. Thank God for making me able to stand before you today. I give God all the glory for all he has done and continues to do in my life, in our country's life, uh, which we should dedicate to him as selfless service to the people of Ghana. And above all, I'm grateful for the occasion to serve under this government, and passionately so, 
so the very best of one's God-given abilities will be given to the country. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister responsible for finance for the statement on the National Development Bank, which uh, you have rightly mentioned as the Development Bank Ghana. Honorable Minister has explained the concept and the place of the National Development Bank in our economic future. He's given some clarity to the old conversation of whether or not we need a greenfield vehicle or um, a merger or a transformation of some existing banks and has shown the difference uh, in the approaches and the benefits. He's also outlined the major focal areas, agribusiness, manufacturing, ICT and related areas, home ownership, etc. And he's also been speaking to first the capitalization, second the mobilization of other resources um, into, may I say, DBG's bucket so that it can then stretch its hand out and affect or impact the Ghanaian economy in the medium to long term. Colleagues, it's a good time to take your questions. Uh, you just uh, give me a wave out, uh, get a microphone to you, and if you have any questions, we'll take them in batches of four, uh, not more than three batches, and we'll wrap up. Sir, we'll start with you if you introduce yourself. No, there's a lady behind you. Uh, Minister, with your permission, we'll be biased towards the ladies. <laughs> so we'll the start with the. will be very happy. Yeah, the president <laughs> will be very happy with that. So we'll start with the lady, and then we'll come to you before we go around. Take this one. Yeah, you can use this one. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, I'm Natalie Nettie from City TV. Uh, many have complained of high interest rates, which are preventing most companies in the country to borrow from banks. How low will the interest rates from DBG be to other banks for on lending to the businesses? Yeah. Hello. Can I? Yes, please. Go okay. Ahead. My name is Eben Sabute from Joy FM. Join us. Uh, my question has to do with the funds that the president signed uh, yesterday with the European Development Investment Bank. Sorry. I didn't hear the minister mention whether it's their equity share, whether it's a loan for the country, is whether it's grant, and if it is a loan, we should be able to add it to the country's debt. Because you did mention that uh, the bank will be made to pay back all loans that government will be taking on its behalf. So if it is a loan, uh, are we correct to add it to the country's debt? And then also, uh, I want to ask that with the operations of the bank, do we have any policy directive on local content? I ask this because um, we see investors coming into our space and when they are giving facilities, uh, our locals, especially our entrepreneurs, are left out. Thank you. Minister, may I ask you to respond to these? Uh, I know I said four, but... Yeah. <laughs> they are heavy enough. Uh, yeah, it's like session B, A-level questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> so please take them and then I'll come back some more. Great. Um, thank you very much from, from City. I think that the interest rate issue, you know, has been really bedeviling um, for us. Uh, but I think right now, uh, you know, I think we came in with, you know, close to 30% or so, um, uh, and then came to 23. Um, now I think we are somewhere around 18%. I mean, that's not great, but you can see um, the, the gradual fall. Um, I, I think naturally, as we begin to see more resources uh, in which we are unlending to these institutions, um, one will have um, uh, the banks will, will adjust because there's more capital uh, and we, we hope that the market will, will, will drive it down um, but that's the whole intention um, of, of our current situation you have a central bank you have um, uh, the government we raise money we are in a deficit and so money is hard to come by um, the banks then invest um, in T-bills, etc., and the cycle keeps going. Um, so the expectation is that we break that cycle uh, with these resources and, and allow um, uh, sort of the market um, to bring things down. But there will be certain guarantee facilities uh, which then really shields the banks 
uh, and in a sense enables them um, to take a lot more risk. Um, so I think naturally we expect it to end as a reason for the intervention. Um, Joy, uh, you talked about the loan. Uh, the, the whole essence of this is, is to create institutions that can borrow on their own balance sheet so that government is, is, is out of it. So that then the shareholders uh, who will become um, owners of the bank, uh, you know, are then the people that um, um, private sector is lending to. Um, certainly we'll have money in there, um, but soon you, you begin to see uh, a dilution of government shareholding uh, in such a way that that entity on its own uh, is able to go to the capital markets without adding a burden to, to the country. Um, so the more such independent institutions you create, um, of which then uh, lend on market basis or ensure that it is governed properly, uh, reduces our, our participation you know, in, in that. Um, so that's really uh, what we are looking to do. Uh, with, with, regard, with regards to local content, I mean, I, I think um, um, usually you have influence when you have resources in financial institutions. Uh, and so we would, we would insist, insist uh, on, on ensuring that Ghanaian entrepreneurs um, are the people um, that um, these um, financial institutions and banks will look to uh, for, for such things. And that's the whole thing about ensuring that this development, you know, is also dictated um, by strengthening of indigenous entrepreneurs, as you see in Asia. And therefore, the interventions of companies like this, uh, banks like this, uh, will help, you know, our local banks uh, to be discriminatory and promotional um, of Ghanaian enterprises. In the end, we have to build, you know, our own country, and this will be one way of supporting access to capital um, and also hopefully at lower rates. Minister, yeah. thank you. Um, colleagues, I'll call your hand, sir, but I see another lady. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, madam, let's hear you. Then we'll go to a call. Then, gentlemen, will come to you. All right, good evening. Nano here from Asasi Radio. Uh, I would like you to respond to um, discussions in certain quarters that. Um, the, the collapse of some banks was to make way for this particular bank. Mm. As, in, as in the, the difficulties that banks had or the financial sector resolution in the retail <laughs> sector as against um, you know, this development bank. Bloomberg, let me hear from you. No, it's okay. Let's hear from you, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, um, Minister. It's exciting to hear you talk about this thing because you have the, the track record, especially in the, in the way you work with data banks. So I wish us all the worst. Um, sir, how much investment do you expect this um, GBG to in, inject into the focus areas, say, in the first five years? And you also didn't answer the question my brother asked about the EIB the stratification, be it equity, a loan, what is it? We didn't get clarity on that. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you say you're going to give these monies to commercial banks to unlend to the and focus... And non-bank financial institutions. And non-bank financial, to unlend to the se focus sectors. Um, how sure are you that these banks are not going to channel this money into buying treasury bills, you know, the buying government um, securities? Yeah. And also, how do you benchmark the, the interest rates for, for this facility? Is it G-bills? What rate? Is there any benchmark so that we know that it works within a certain range, giving us a long-term long -term facility? Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Akko. Uh, there's a gentleman here. Oh, you're here. Hi. Right. Thank you. Um, my name is Maxwell. Thank you for the opportunity. I. I want to find out. Not so home they work for? Oh, oh what's it? Daily graphics, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, one of the concerns we have is long-term funding, which this is attempting to address. And we have similar initiatives that aim to also address this. One of them is the Exim Bank. Uh, we have, uh, we've had 
ADB, NIB, trying to do similar things in the past. And this is the latest initiative. So the question is, what is it that this development bank is going to do new that the other initiatives haven't achieved? Mm. And what lessons have we learned from the previous initiatives that we are going to apply to this, that we can be assured that at least it will help correct some of the inefficiencies, so to say, yeah. in the previous initiatives. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you very much. Um, Risa, where are your hands? Great. Thank you. Really great questions, and, and thank you for that. Um, so, um, as I say, uh, radio, um, uh, I'm trying to move into a very positive spin for the country as to where we are going and see whether we can rid ourselves of some of the cynicism that, you know, uh, has, has pervaded us. Um, but, but the issue of even the nature of the Development Bank is just so different um, from what um, the retail banks um, that um, that's the Bank of Ghana had to close um, down. Um, uh, and, and so it, it's difficult to, to, to align it, uh, except there's some sinister motive that, that somebody had. But, but let's remind ourselves that the, you know, the AQR, the Asset Quality Review um, documents, were done in 2015, which indicated you know, that these um, institutions uh, were literally bankrupt. And it was really the courage uh, of the president and really the professionalism of the central bank uh, that you know took the bull by the horn and say you know let's clean this up um, and really when you see how the banks are performed over that period I think there's a lot more confidence in them and also the idea in an year of having 4.6 million depositors money saved you know is incalculable you know so I think we should just oppose with that reality but then the, the question still remains, you know, that in the financial architecture, there's really no long-term financing. And it takes a while for interest rates to come down. Um, so the president, his wisdom and cabinet, uh, then decided that let's intervene um, with uh, a KFW-type uh, initiative, um, of which then is able to get support from government, but essentially looks outside to be able to raise the cap type of capital needed for much longer term than Exim Bank, et cetera, et cetera, uh, which then feeds your financial institutions and so that they may be able to take more risk um, and that the interest rates uh, will come down. Um, so the EIB facility, for example, um, is, is a five-year grace period, uh, 15 years, and therefore 20-year tenor. Um, uh, and indicative interest rates uh, of almost um, just half a percent um, for, for that period. Um, so you, you begin to see the type of capital that we hope to attract going forward, uh, which seeks to uh, inoculate you know, the, the problems that, that we have, access and cost of, of, of capital. Um, then you have the issue of um, of why it will not be an ADB or an NIB. And, and clearly, um, you know, the migration of those institutions into retail and their need, therefore, um, to, 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 to raise money um, uh, from depositors uh, changed the tenor of what um, um, uh, development banks should be. And that is what we are going to stay away from. Um, so you, you, you've heard me insisting on governance and uh, professional management uh, and a global reach um, for uh, personnel uh, and board members that, that will run this uh, to make sure that we remain uh, a KLW or a Japanese bank or um, of that nature. Um, so. We, we are very confident about where we are going. We've strengthened uh, the retail institutions, so we don't need to be a retail institution, uh, and we'll have the appropriate capital um, to be able to inject uh, into, into, into the country. 
Uh, in terms of um, um, sort of benchmarking rates and being sure um, that um, they lend appropriately and not buy government securities, um, certainly um, there will be uh, days of reckoning. We, we will keep tabs um, of how our monies are being applied uh, in a way compared to um, the resources they had before, etc., and really keep people's um, um, feet um, to, to, to the fire. Um, so I, I don't know, I think in that, uh, Maxwell, I think I've also kind of answered um, your questions. Um, but, but I think it's, it's really an exciting moment um, and for us. Uh, the world is also uh, coming to the realization of the need for long-term capital injection uh, in a different way. And uh, I think we are right in the crest of that. Yeah, you know, we are expecting to, um, at the very least, um, capitalize it uh, over a billion dollars, you know, within that period, you know, but then you go into, into leveraging um, and that could, you know, enable us um, to have a lot more resources to bring locally as it goes into the market, you know, to, to, to raise funds for that. Minister, thank you. We'll take a final batch of questions and then we will wrap up. And if there are none, then we will wrap up. Colleagues. Minister, I want to thank you for your time. We know you've had a very tough uh, schedule today, um, but we thank you for making time to give us all of this information on the development.